how would you say that feminism has kind of been a big detriment detriment to the church because like we're talking about our families but how does that extrapolate to the church yeah well one one of the things that i'm i'm very sad about mm. is that i don't believe feminism was enforced enforced on the church mm -hmm. it was something that we've welcomed we've, we've welcomed yeah. And, yeah and this is where i'm sad about right it's one thing for you to be enforced to do something even though the church always fights back yeah. whether it's enforced or not but it's another thing where you yourself welcome it into your church. Yeah. It becomes part of your congregation, part of your Sunday service. And um, we have the same perspective. We believe in male leadership, male yeah. pastors, and so on. And now you see that dynamic changing. Yeah. And in those churches, as we said earlier, they have an immediate effect where they yeah. get a lot of people but then as time goes on, you see those churches fall apart. Yeah, you see the cracks in the yeah. walls and yeah. Because yeah. they're not honoring the way God intended church to be mm -hmm. as well as marriage. Yeah. The right? family, yeah. For example, like a female pastor who's leading a congregation of men, right? And say it's 50 people, 100 people, whatever it is. She would go home. How do you think? she would be able to submit to her husband. Mm -hmm. She'll find that challenging, right? Yeah. She's leading men in the church and she got a, She has to come home and be submissive to her yeah. husband. Yeah. So a lot of these people would often look at passages in, in Timothy, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, permit women not to teach and so on as cultural. Context, yeah. Right? Like historical context. There's, there's a history behind it. Let's not take it as face value. Mm -hmm. Why? The question yeah. is why? do we really have solid biblical background for it no it's more the culture is is pretty popular with it mm. and and let's receive it let let's have it in our church so to me you know we've spoken about the church but one point i wanted to mention when it came to family is not having that responsibility of having a healthy atmosphere knowing the roles and so on it's a blessing for your kids but also one of the benefits of marrying a Christian woman Absolutely. is that she recognizes your role. Yeah. Often men, um, Christian men, they marry a girl for her beauty, right? And there's nothing wrong. Women are beautiful or for something else, but not for her spirituality yeah, first. Not for her character, yeah. the, the spiritual character. So what they end up is they end up it, the man ends up arguing and fighting mm -hmm. for his role in marriage. But to find a godly woman, you're not fighting for your marriage. You are living out, uh, sorry, you're not fighting for your role in marriage. You are living out your role in marriage. And not only that, she is there to encourage you to live that out. Exactly. So she's not opposing you there. She's actually encouraging you to live that out. And likewise, yourself, you know the role of your wife. In, in in the marriage and you're actually encouraging empowering and serving her yeah. to fulfill that role in her life yeah. and if the children see that that's a huge blessing yeah. children will be growing up in a very healthy space yeah right we don't need safe space we need good marriages that would create great space for children to grow up and tackle this world. Yeah, nothing safer yeah. than that, I tell you. N not, yeah. not to live in this victimhood mentality, yeah. Yeah. not to be weak, not to shy away. You've had good foundation with your parents because they're godly parents or yourself. You're, you're building a godly marriage. Your children would have this great godly foundation that they're going to grow up in and you will get to see that success in their life. Mm. You know, and, and what... I really like about raising children is the earlier you set the standard and the you build the foundation the easier it becomes later on to build of good course. things on that foundation of yeah. often parents and men in particular because that's a huge huge responsibility for us is that we neglect our children's age especially in the young stages because we think they can't comprehend mm. much so there's not much for me to teach them. That is a lie. Yeah. 
we can spend so much time investing in our children now so it becomes easier for us as they grow yeah it's um it reminds me of that there's there's a charles spurgeon quote he said weep now for your children and rejoice later or have peace now and rejoice now by kind of neglecting them and just easing your mind and you will weep later so oh. it's kind of that that idea you have i think you have a good 10 years to really solidly disciple your kids and this is an important thing when you're talking about how to be a biblical father we talked about being a biblical mm. husband how to wash your wife with the word of god to 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 um cleanse her with the word of god to instruct her you're discipling her that's pretty much um a, an important aspect and an important quality of your your role as a man the same thing for your kids it's your job but the issue is today we've kind of delegated the role of discipleship to either the church sometimes men will just kind of delegate it to the mother mm. and be like oh you know she can tell them about god or this that's kind of your role and it's one of the things that we look at um in fatherhood and in manhood we look at how we're supposed to be discipling our kids we as the men are supposed to be discipling them and showing them the things of the spirit because we tend to look at the spiritual things as feminine mm. but that's not true the spiritual thing is the masculine thing biblically speaking yeah it's telling someone telling your child whether it's a boy or girl how can you know god as i know him as i'm close to him right mm. but you can't really teach something that you don't yourself have so one of the issues is men are not close to god all right relegating that closeness to the woman because generally women these days are getting a bit closer to god and the guys are kind of veering off which we're really praying for that resurgence yeah. we're praying for the men to come back and so because the woman is praying a bit more and she's a bit closer to god they kind of relegate that responsibility to her yeah. and she's now instructing and teaching the kids which is better than nothing but ultimately the statistics are very clear if the man himself is not leading his house spiritually you are much much more likely for your children to become apostates to yeah. not to not end up being christian in their lives yeah so if you are taking them to church as a man if you are teaching them the word of god if you are demonstrating spirituality they are much more likely to become Christians and to remain Christians throughout their life.